Convection currents are one of the uh, most important things that we study in science this year. Uh, and they're so important because they're involved in so many different processes that happen uh, on the Earth. All right? When we talk about convection currents, um, it explains how a lava lamp works. It's a good, easy demonstration for us to look at. It tells us how weather happens, how do global uh, winds happen, you know, what moves our hurricanes uh, towards us here in the Gulf Coast. Um, we can look at how the ocean currents move, how the warm water and the cold water moves throughout the ocean. And that, that affects things like how animals uh, migrate throughout the ocean. We can also look inside the Earth to see convection currents. In the mantle, we can see how the magma rises and falls. Um, so it's all, all intertwined, and if you understand this basic concept of convection currents, then you understand how all those things happen. It all happens with an understanding of density. So first we need to understand that density is equal to mass divided by volume. Sometimes we'll draw a heart to help remember the formula. It's a mass over volume. So I like to think if we had a boat, right? Its density is very low. It's very low. It's not very packed right now with people. So if I start putting somebody in there, I put this little woodsman in here, the boat is still not very densely packed. The more people that I put into this boat, who are apparently at a costume party, the more densely packed the boat gets. So let's think about that. What happens when all of these people get together and are in this boat? Right? it's going to be more densely packed. If I keep packing more and more people in it, what happens to that boat? Well, it's going to eventually start to sink. So the more densely packed, as the, the more dense objects sink. All right, less dense float. So if we were to take all of these guys out of the boat, it would come back up. If we put more people into the boat, it would sink all the way down. This picture down here gives us a really good example of density. You can see that the lamp oil is floating on the very top of the column. It is the least dense. We can imagine that it would look like this. The particles are very spread out, not very densely packed. On the bottom, we have honey. This would be the most dense. We can imagine that these particles would be tightly packed together. We can look at this popcorn kernel here. And we can see that the popcorn kernel is floating on top of the corn syrup. So the popcorn kernel is less dense than the corn syrup, but it is more dense than the maple syrup because it has sank beneath it. So what things affect density? One of the most important things in this unit is temperature. And we all remember this scene from Tangled when at last they could see the light and they were lighting these paper lanterns. And what happens is they, they light the inside on fire, that air gets hot, and the lanterns begin to rise. In a hot air balloon, you have this fire going on right here, heating up all the air inside the balloon, and that's causing it to rise. So we know that the higher the temperature, it rises. So if it rises, we know it must be lower the density. Hot air means lower density. Another thing that we could look at is salinity, which is how salty something is. The saltier it is, the more dense it is. So more salt typically means that the water is going to be more dense. So we can imagine that salty water would sink. All right, let's take a look at this uh, lava lamp here. And we know that there's a light bulb right down here and that light bulb is heating up. So right above the lava lamp it's heating up and hot rises. Now when it gets to the top it's no longer near the lava lamp so it's going to start to cool. So down here is hot, up here is cool. When it cools it's going to fall to the side and you're going to see what we like to call a convection current, which is what this whole section is about. So it rises in the center because of the heat from the light bulb is making it less dense. Gets to the top, it gets cool, it becomes more dense, which makes it sink back. Now we can see this in the air. 
for instance, over the land and water. The land heats up very quickly during the day. The water is still a little cool. So you have the air rising over the land, falling over the water, making a convection current. Right? We actually call this one a sea breeze. It's why the wind is always at your face when you go to the beach during the day. You could also see it in the water. Right? If you go um, to the beach here, you see there's ice. Maybe it's someplace near the Arctic. That cold water is sinking. Water gets warmed up and starts to rise, and so we get this convection current. We could also see it in the, uh, ma in the mantle. Uh, beneath the Earth's surface in the magma. It's getting heated up by the core, it's rising, it's falling, and so you get these convection currents. And we're going to learn during the plate tectonic section, this is actually what makes the tectonic plates move. In summary, density is the mass divided by volume. Density is how tightly packed the molecules are. Things that are more dense tend to sink, and things that are less dense tend to float. Two important factors that affect density are temperature and salinity. As things warm up, they become less dense and they float. As things cool down, they become more dense and they sink. Salinity means how salty water is. Salty water is more dense and it sinks. Convection currents are the rising of warm liquids and gases and the falling of cooler liquids and gases. Convection currents can be found in the air, in the water, and in the magma beneath the Earth's surface.